Worst case scenario is this war extends out beyond the boundaries uh, that right now it's contained in, which is Israel and the Strip of Gaza, the Gaza Strip, that is. Uh, but I Iran gets involved, and obviously there's, there's a uh, choking of uh, the oil artery uh, through the Strait of Hormuz, which provides 20 to 30 percent of oil consumption uh, globally. And so how much sensitivity would that have for the kind of supplies coming to India from the Middle East? Yeah, so oil is a very large uh, you know, import for India, one of our largest imports, and, and that will clearly create pressures. We saw something like this happen last year as well when the Russia-Ukraine war broke out and, and, you know, and certain volumes were restricted and therefore prices surged. So these are going to create pressures. The last thing I think the global economy needs is another supply shock. We saw this in the pandemic. We saw this in labor markets. We saw this with the Russia-Ukraine war. We're now seeing this in the Middle East. I'll just reiterate, however, that despite these pressures, I mean, uh, as I said, there are significant buffers here that we have on the external sector to deal with it. But from a growth perspective, you know, from a policy perspective, this will create inconvenient pressures, no doubt about that. So part of the reason why the rupee is weaker and is getting uh, and is adjusting lower is, of course, because uh, the RBI is shoring up forex reserves. Uh, they are buying dollars uh, and have been doing so. That's been their strategy uh, for the last couple of quarters. Uh, but do you think uh, that there's a level, there's a uh, you know line in the sand that they can draw? Because at the end of the day, it is putting pressure on import costs uh, and may have some sort of a cascading impact on imported inflation. And so do you think that it's a prudent strategy now that reserves are standing at close to $600 billion, which is pretty much the level at which we were, uh, that India was pre-pandemic? You know, I think the biggest lesson we learned from a decade ago is that no amount of reserves are enough because it's not just the quantum of reserves you have, but the perception that you have significant reserves. And I think there will not be any change in the RBI strategy, and I would completely agree with that line of thinking. Remember what happened in three, month, three or four months last year. The RBI had to sell almost $100 billion of reserves, uh, you know, in, in across spot markets and forward markets. So these things can evaporate very quickly. And one important difference in reserve accumulation between India, for example, over the last decade and East Asia back in the 90s and 2000s is those reserves were earned in that they were, uh, you know, accumulated through current account surpluses. In India's case, these are borrowed reserves. These are happening because of capital inflows. So there is a corresponding liability in the economy that can unwind at any point in time. So I think the RBI is very prudent in accumulating reserves. Also, remember the broad trade-weighted real effective exchange rate has been, you know, flattish in the last three, four years to the extent that India wants to boost exports, wants to promote a China plus one strategy. The last thing in the world you want is for your currency to strengthen at a time when the Chinese currency is weakening. So I actually, you know, strongly agree with, with the approach that they're following.